uh, I got bumped off. So we were kind of talking about, um, oh, thanks, Charity. You're so sweet. We were kind of talking about ethics and, um, you know, when you're developing yourself psychically to let it open up naturally, to not, um, you know, try to pull a rabbit out of the hat or put pressure on yourself. Because if you are, if you're putting pressure on yourself to open up psychically, hi, Kim, I, I lost my connection and this little whirling thing was just whirling and I don't know, I don't know where we were or what I was saying, but uh, I'm back. So we're going to, we're going to keep going at it. And Kim, I like the point that you made about um, return clients for people. You know, um, that's a, a good way to tell a good psychic is to ask them about their rate of uh, word of mouth clients or client return over time. Uh, because a, a good reading, of course, is going to bring people back. Um, uh, ethical, somebody feeling that it was very helpful, they're, of course, going to share it with their friends and their family. And that's the way to build the business here with this type of approach. I also feel like, you know, um, if it's not somebody who's doing it professionally, but say, say I'm in my workplace, like when I used to work in nursing homes, uh, I loved it. But I read for people on the side or they would come to me with questions and I would tell them, um, I'm going to meditate on that and, and I'll, I'll see what I get on it if I sit with it. Hi, Marie. Helen. Uh, it's so nice to see you. Um, you know, being able to, if it's not something where you have somebody in front of you and you have to give them a message right then. Hi, Susan. I, I got booted out into the abyss. So I got, I got back. It took me a minute though. I th thank you for coming back, guys. Um, I'm referencing um, when you're, when you're, reading say or you're working with somebody and or you somebody has a question psychically it's all right to say i'm gonna dream on it uh yay i'm back um yeah it's all right to say let me go home and meditate on that or i'm gonna i'm gonna sit in my sacred space and ponder that and give it time to think about especially if you're working with say somebody and and it's really uh Hi, Sue. Uh, yeah, I'm back. I, I got kicked off and then I got back. So here we are. And uh, we're talking about being able to give yourself time to ponder something or to sleep on it or to meditate on it, you know, to not put pressure on yourself. If, uh, you know, it's one thing if you're doing it professionally and you've got somebody sitting there and, you know, you, you want to give them the, the time that that's expected. But if it is, say, you're working with friends or you're working, say, with coworkers and, and it's not psychic work per se, you know, being able to take the information and go and, and be able to sleep on it, meditate on it, sit quietly with it inside yourself to really, again, take notes. You know, we talked about running a tape recorder and being able to record sort of your own stream of consciousness, just saying what you feel, just blurting out whatever pops into your head on the topic and to give yourself sometimes a lot of time with a psychic message or a topic, especially if it's something really important and heavy and, and it's a big deal for somebody. You don't wanna, oh shushies, you don't wanna rush that process and uh, um, try and force a circle into a square or, or rush it. You know, I'm, I, um, I'll say when I was first starting out uh, doing this professionally, Sometimes after the client would leave, I would get a whole download of information. I don't do that anymore. I, I kind of open up the space with the one person I'm with, and then I shut that down and I close that off after. But in the beginning, when I was really first working out uh, and, pr and practicing and developing this, um, I would get a whole wave of information after the fact. And I'm, I never uh, would run behind a client and call them back or chase them down. But I did find that that was a bit difficult for me. And I, what I realized was that I was putting a lot of pressure on myself to have to perform the service and wasn't relaxed enough. As soon as they would leave and I would say, be sitting in my office space, all this information would start to come in. And what I learned was to be able to really capture that mindset of sitting safely in my office space or quietly in that space with the person in front of me. So again, knowing that you might get a huge dump of information when you least expect it sometimes, or when you finally stop trying to think about it and all of a sudden a whole bunch of information comes through when you stop trying to think. So to recognize that that might happen, and to maybe dialogue if you're if you're working with somebody 
to be able to say, hey, when I get something, can I reach out? Can I call you? Of course, that's not if it's, say, somebody coming for a reading, but if it is you practicing with friends or practicing with coworkers um, and working on your psychic self, I really encourage you to give yourself a good amount of time, a, a nice window of time. Hi, Valerie. Oh, hey, thanks. Yeah, I love this color. You're so sweet with your compliments. Um, so, uh, you know, not putting that pressure on yourself because, again, pressure is a wonderful way to make the psychic information drift far, far back in your head and not be in the forefront. The, the more lighter you feel, the less pressure you have on yourself for information to come forward, the easier it is for it to get there. I can tell you, um, um, you know, all eyes on you, trying to really give a wow message and the pressure's on, the pressure's on. If it feels like pressure to you, I can assure you, you have to put into place several different practices to avoid that pressure so that you can be in a flow state. Again, um, imagining that you're sitting in your most favorite spot or in your sacred space that you've created to do your meditations at home or do your psychic work at home. Being able to meditate quickly back into that space, say if you're trying to come up with a message and the pressure's on, um, there's lots of little tricks you can do to get out of a state of pressure or um, intensity so that, that that psychic self can be in a wonderful state of flow. So I definitely encourage that. Um, no pressure, no pressure. This thing is like a little delicate, um, shy animal. Sometimes it's loud and boisterous and bang right in your face, but other times it's subtle and a little bit kind of shy. And it wants the wheels to stop turning so that it can come forward and dance around. It's one of the reasons that right when we're about to fall asleep or right when we're in between that half awake, half asleep state, we're incredibly wide open intuitive. It's oftentimes we'll have waking dreams where a whole lot of stuff starts coming into your mind's eye or your subconscious self. You're picking up on a lot of things right when you're in that neat floaty space between sleep. And it's one of the spots that I encourage people to get to to practice their psychic stuff is to set an alarm and, you know, wake up in the middle of the night I know that sounds crazy, but it is a nice way to practice where you're partially asleep, partially awake. You're going to pose questions to your psychic self that are not end of the world, like big, big questions, but little subtle things that you want to look for information on, little pieces of detail that you're not emotionally attached to so that you can be very neutral and receive information. But working during that time when you are, say, um, partially awake, partially asleep, or being able to get to such a deep meditation where you're bordering between the two is really amazing for the psychic self. We really open up during that space. One of the things I've also learned, it's a little strange, but I learned that I'm much better at doing psychic work when, when my stomach's empty, when I'm a little bit hungry. And I have another friend, he's amazing, he's an incredible psychic, and he reads much better when he's full. Um, he just, when he's hungry, his body's thinking about wanting to eat and he's not as tuned into the psychic stuff. And when I'm full, I'm, I'm kind of sated and even I want to take a little bit of a nap. I don't know, but I really do make sure that I am not, I haven't just come off of a huge meal. If I have a bunch of psychic work to do, I nibble and graze throughout the day and I just seem to have a more accurate and tuned in vibe. So to know that what works for one does not work for the other and might not work. So don't compare yourself to others. Pay attention again to the clues that your body gives you, the clues that you receive. It might be the time of day. For me, if I have to do an early morning radio show at like 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning, I can assure you I do not get up in the morning for that. I stay up all night long and I sleep after the radio show. Um, or the TV show or whatever it is if it's in the morning. And the reason I say that is I know me after all these years of doing this, if I am just waking up, I'm groggy. I want my coffee. I don't necessarily want to be doing a lot of heady psychic work. But if it's a little later in the day, and it, like it, I, I feel like I get better and better as the day moves on, but a little bit later in the day or in the evening, my psychic self is like, kapow, it's popping, it's awake, it's going for it. And I always schedule, if I can, big events, those types of things, definitely not in the morning if I can avoid it. But if it is early, early in the morning, 
I don't even sleep because I'm I'm so much better at it. And it's I really feel like oh man, these are gonna these people are gonna get some great messages because I stayed up all night long for it and I'm jazzed about it. And I sleep like a log after the fact. But that took me a long time to figure out. Um, that hi Sierra, hi. I, I'm on live, um, and uh, I saw that you called while we were doing this. So um, I will definitely, when I finish this off, um, I'll give you a call. <laughs> You're so sweet. Um, yeah, when I'm hangry. You're right, Kim. Don't do a reading when I'm hangry. Oh, I don't get terribly hangry. I actually, for me, get like sluggish, like little Winnie the Pooh, sleepy bear when I have a full belly. And uh, I just kind of sit and I want to just be in a little, I don't want to necessarily be working up here or in my heart, you know, my psychic stuff. I just want to be lulled and lulled into a soft space. So, hi, hi, Elizabeth. I'm so happy you're here. Um, so yeah, it, does anybody have any questions about opening up psychically or, um, some people sometimes when they're opening up have trouble slowing it down where messages will come in really, really fast. And, um, I always inform people when it's happening like that, where you're just getting message after message and it won't slow down, um, that, that it's important to tell your subconscious mind to give it to you slower. It's all right to dialogue with it up there, to be able to say, okay, I want to hear this. I want to get this message. Shushies. I want to get this message, but I, I, I need it to come in a little slower. And to know that your subconscious self is going to remember, it will remember. Or like I say, run a tape recorder or a voice recorder and just start to blither and say, just start to be rambling, rambling. I see this. I feel that um, this is coming in. That's coming in. And to not worry about whether or not it makes rhyme or reason. It's all right if it, it does not make cohesive sense at first. You can always dig through your notes and meditate on what you received to get a deeper message later. But if things are just flying through and coming at you at a breakneck pace, it's perfectly okay to just download and dump a bunch of information, write down a bunch of notes, and then ponder it later for what, what the bigger message is or how do I turn this into a message. But to know that um, sometimes it will come fast, sometimes it comes slow, and it's important to not feel like you're being um, overrun by your psychic self or um, you know, putting pressure on yourself that you have to have an answer. I think that's the key piece is to not, when you're practicing, ask questions that are really, really, really big emotional questions. You know, if, if you're asking a seriously heavy duty question and you're just developing psychically, it's incredibly important that you're not putting a whole lot of pressure. If you are, if you know for a fact you're gonna be very upset if you see that it's, the answer is no. I would say if you're just starting out and you're really developing yourself intuitively, to not ask those kinds of questions because you're not gonna be able to be an objective observer if you're already emotional about one entire possibility of an answer. It's important that you stay as neutral as possible while downloading and receiving information. All right, so, um, oh, I missed your energy too reconnecting come back how the universe is marvelous the universe is marvelous and it's a perfect design isn't it and it's so nice that you're here um and that you're hi ellen um and that you're you're showing up on here i'm just so excited and um i i remember your laugh so well and your big smile marie so i'm just very happy that you're here yay so um one of the things that I also tell people is if you have things that you are definitely nervous about, um, and, and I, you know, I don't necessarily want spirits flying around inside my house. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a little bit stern with spirits about those things. I don't want strangers walking through my front door, and I don't want a bunch of spirits lurking around, floating around inside my house either. I don't like that. And that makes me uncomfortable. I've seen them. I've bumped into them. I don't want little old men in my hallway or anything like that. Um, some people like the thrills and chills part of it. I do not. So to really... Hi, Mary Rose. Yay. Oh, you've closed off. Mm, you came to the right kind of discussion. Um, so having rules, knowing I, there, I don't want to be frightened. I don't want something to wake me up at night. I don't want um, uh, spirits prancing around in my face. That just, 
I don't want any of that. So to be very clear to your subconscious what you don't want to receive. Um, if you want things to come through in a very subtle way, if you want them to come through from a very gentle pathway, to be able to kind of put those rules out there to your subconscious self to know, let's play nice up here. Um, I want, first off, all of the information to be for the highest good, to not be frightening, to feel that you have some control over this. This is your subconscious. Sometimes we need to talk it into control and let it know, don't frighten me. Don't catch me off guard. Don't wake me up when I'm sleeping. Of course, unless it's an emergency. If you give enough time for your psychic self to develop, if you're giving time for meditations, if you're giving time to just sit and quietly work on quieting the chatter of the mind and trusting that you have these gifts inside you and that they're going to open up, you can also know that it's for the highest good and that you don't want things coming in feeling out of control. You want to feel a bit in control of this. You want to feel balanced with this. I also encourage if, say, you're working on your psychic self, like Mary, you're mentioning that you've closed off a little bit. One of the ways to open up is such simple little practices, such as in the morning when you are just puttering around, putting on your makeup, brushing your teeth, picking out your clothes, you know, often it's things that don't take any thought in our head, right, during those times. But to tell your subconscious self that you're going to be open to receive information during that time, possibly. That you're thinking, okay, during my daily menial tasks, when I'm not needing to be full of thought, that maybe I'm open to receive things then. Um, that you're just going to clear your mind. It's all right to clear your mind during those tasks anyway and just be in singular focus, mindfulness technique where you're not letting that brain run away with you. You're brushing your teeth for heaven's sakes. You don't need to fix the world during that moment. But to also kind of say to your subconscious self, when I'm puttering and not thinking, I'm open to feeling, sensing, and downloading information as well. And to kind of get into this bit of a dialogue with your subconscious self of when are good times to receive information and when you don't want to receive information. And practicing with that a little bit. It's definitely good for you and um, a great practice to get into as well. Um, you know, Mary, another thing when you say that you've closed off, I think that one of the things, because I go through and in and out of, um, hi, Martin. Martine, I love it. And Sophie, hi. Um, being able to, to ask yourself, you know, did I close off for a reason? Sometimes we close off when we're really entrenched in our day to day lives or when we're in a state of great change, um, moving from a house to another or helping, really um, spending a lot of time, uh, say, involved in other people's lives and helping them in the day to day process. A lot of times our subconscious self and our psychic self. Is kind of out of the way. It's it's it, we're we're not we're so busy in our day to day life that it kind of recedes back into the background a little bit. And once our life settles down, it's all right to sort of open the door and invite it back out again. It's never really left us. It's always in there. It's just to be able to understand why did it shrink away. Um, for some people, they might have received a frightening message or they might have seen something that off put them a little bit and they kind of drop this big gate down on their intuitive self because they just don't want to see anything negative. And I really support that. Uh, but what's important is to know, oh, I put a gate down. I, I actually intended to stop that and to know, OK, but I'm also now going to start to raise that. I'm so sorry about my dog, guys. I'm now going to really start to raise that gate up. I'm going to let my dog out. I'm going to step away for one second, guys, and just open the door because I think he wants to go out, and I would prefer that. Then I could just keep talking. So I'll be right back. I'm so sorry. Come here, T.T. Come on, little bug. Oh, he's a good boy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Good boy. Oh, all right. Real life stuff. Okay, guys, so um, to be able to say, okay, why did I shut down or what, a, what why, why did that drift away from me? And to be able to almost retrace your footsteps and go back to reopen it again, to invite it back to play um, and to get into that process again gently. Because um, it's, it's, I, I feel like our subconscious wants to play with us all the time. <laughs> Maybe my dog sees a ghost. You're so funny, Mary. I don't think so. I don't let ghosts lurk around in my space. I have a zero ghost um, uh, rule here at my house. And 
Uh, I just don't, I don't play that way. For me, I spend enough time meditating that if spirit wants to come through and talk to me, um, I let, I let spirit come and talk to me when I am kind of in an ethereal mindset, when I have left my sacred space here and I am psychically out there connecting with energy and connecting with spirit. That's when I'm okay meeting with, with ghosts and spirits. But for me, I don't want them in my house. I don't want them in um if my dog is seeing one i hope it's well off my property and over there <laughs> uh, all right so um oh i love what you're saying my life is unsettled and i'm closed off that that's probably why um as we go through a lot of twists and turns in our daily life we end up closed off and that's very normal what i want is for you to just tell your like be very gentle with yourself and say oh i understand I understand um, during times of unrest or shifting and changing, sometimes when we're under stress, we're in a lot of pressure. Sometimes if we're dealing with any kind of health issue or um, um, really big pressures in our life, that psychic subconscious self just, just isn't out and playing. We're so wrapped up in the daily life and the pressures of it that we're up here in our head. We're trying to grind it out. We're trying to keep our feet on the ground. We're trying to stay balanced, right? That conscious effort to stay balanced. And in doing that, we're not floating into that, that um, intuitive space. That is a luxury space. And to know that part of, even while you're living an unsettled life, if it's still unsettled, is to give yourself the okay to somehow visualize that you're closing off all the unsettled things that you're maybe going into say your office or your meditation space and when you're setting up that space or getting ready to go in that space you are making a very very conscious effort to push away the stressful details of your daily life for this sacred moment that i'm i understand i'm going through unrest but for this moment i'm going to open up to feel back in touch with my intuitive self and I'm going to allow all the stress and all the pressure of the exterior world to be insignificant or not existing in this space for this moment. Even if it's only for 10 minutes, um, even setting a timer, you know, we know that the, all the monsters are going to be right outside our door when we finish our meditation or our psychic self. And to trust that it's in there, we, we go in and out of different times where we're wide open and other times where we can't seem to find our intuitive self. But to know that it is in there and it's all right to investigate why am I blocked, what's in the way, why did I shut down a little bit, and that it's okay to open that up and to kind of give a moment of time for it. And then we can get back to the day-to-day -to -day world or the daily life and stuff like that. I love these things that you guys are saying. Hi, Sue. Oh, my gosh. Oh, hi. How nice to see you on here. That's just the most awesome. Um, I grew up with Sue. and. Uh, um, she lived down the street from me, and uh, Sue, I talked about you on one of my radio shows the other night, actually, and had a had a laugh because um, I remember uh, I had to go apologize to you when we were young because I was mean, and and I remember that so well. And I had laughed on the show that I would try to maybe get in touch with you and and tell you that I talked about that and wondered if you still remembered it. <laughs> So, um, you know, a lot of people think that when somebody's been doing psychic work a lot, like every psychic that you know and sit with, uh, they are always going in and out as well of being tuned in. You know, um, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, there's a lot of pressure as a professional psychic if you've got an event going on and you are, say, having to deal with a lot of stress or things going on in your daily life. It's really important and, and a necessary piece of practice is to sit and be able to clear your mind and to get to that state of being able to receive information for the highest good at, at for, for, for this moment and that you're going to pick back up into the daily grind and all the pressures and things. Um, hi, Sam. Um, oh, it's, it's a... You know, it's my first time sitting here just yammering on, blithering, and talking. So it's a first for both of us, Sam. Uh, I do little blogs, little live posts, but I've never just sat and just chatted away with people like this. So um, it's a first for me, too. So I'm really glad you're here. 
Um, so again, being able to sit and, and give space for this to open up and to trust that it's in there. You know, we all have it. Um, some people are very visual. They're going to get information coming through with amazing, incredible visuals. They're going to travel off psychically into different realms. And some of their visions are almost like as detailed as like the most detailed dream. And other people who maybe aren't as visual based or are a bit more logical minded and not as emotional based are still able to tune into their intuitive self. It just may come through in a different format. It might come through with uh, body clues where they're, they're feeling things in their own body. If, if they're um, looking for, like I do, I, I'll, if I'm looking for information about somebody, I'll often catch myself talking from a perspective as if I'm talking, looking through their eyes out at the world. Like I'll say like, oh, I feel a little, um, I feel really blocked right now, or I feel like, oh, there's somebody in my way. There could be a sense of frustration attached to um, a feeling inside. Um, for somebody who's a little more logical, they might get um, body sensations easier than someone who's a bit more visual. Uh, some people might literally hear voices talking. Um, asking yourself, where is that voice coming from? Is it coming from inside my head? Is it coming from the right side or the left side? Is it slightly outside of my head? Is it above me? Is it below me? Does it feel masculine or feminine? Does it feel old or young? Um, being able to be that little investigator and going in and asking yourself a whole bunch of questions about what you're, what information you're receiving is very helpful and it's kind of fun. It's almost like being a little bit of an investigator and being able to just um, uh, go in and say, okay, this is interesting. I've got some neat stuff going on. I want to know more about it. I want to start to uh, take notes on it or run a voice recorder and be able to just blither on about, okay, I have this really interesting feeling. I know it isn't mine. It, it feels separate from myself. Um, when I look at this one topic, I keep getting this feeling like I, I don't want to walk towards it or I'm hesitating for some reason. Being able to go inside and say, how do I feel about that? How does that make me feel? And then being able to roll around with those feelings and really identify those feelings is incredibly helpful. And it's a key way to develop yourself intuitively. Again, we talked about meditation quieting the mind. Um, to hear what our subconscious is saying to us, it's important to unplug from trying really hard to hear it. And that's just such a twisted, weird concept is to, to listen, I have to try not to, right? To listen, I have to simply be open and not try to make it happen, not try to force it to happen. But to trust, I'll know it if I hear it, and I can trust it if I hear it um, for the highest good. That I'm doing this from a place of no pressure. I'm doing this for a message that's going to be um, positive and loving in intention. And then to sit and quiet yourself and be open to it. And if you don't get something, to not feel like you failed or I can't do this. But to simply say, maybe I need to try this at a different time of day. Or maybe I'll give it another try in an hour or so. Or before I go to bed, maybe I'll sit and I'll mull this over again and see if I feel different about it or if I get a different vibe about it. Or maybe pose it to your subconscious self when you're going to sleep to say to your subconscious, I want some information about this thing. Um, I'm open to receive information while I'm sleeping. I want to bring my conscious mind along with me if I'm downloading any information on this topic tonight while I'm sleeping so I can remember it. And just suggest to yourself that you want to maybe get some information about it. And then to take note in the morning when you wake up on how you feel, what your first gut instinct was, what, what your dream was about if you can remember any details. But to, again, not put pressure on ourselves because I think that that's what a lot of people do. Um, okay, Sue, I love what you're writing. We lived next to a really old church. I get a lot of walkthroughs. Oh, my cat can see them, but I can sometimes feel them. I used to get touched a lot. Ooh. Um, so have you kind of built up some um, like sort of boundaries so that you're not a thoroughfare for um, spirits just walking through? Hi, bud. Oh, my gosh. How nice to see you here. Oh, wow. That's just what a gift. Um, 
oh, I love your energy. So Sue, how interesting. I would say one of the things that I would do is I would, um, not from a place of being defensive, but from a place of being empowered to know that your home is your sacred space. Um, I'm, I'm offended by walk-ins unless I invite them in. I don't like spirits jumping through me or talking through me unless I invite them to be there. Again, I'm a big one for um, politeness, you know. Um, I don't, again, I wouldn't let weird, strange people just run in and out of my daily life, and I don't want spirits to do that either. Um, so being able to say, okay, I'm aware that, that I'm open or that my home is sort of drawing energies to it, so I'm going to raise up the vibration of my home space or raise up the edges of my personal boundaries so that I don't have energies trying to get through or just walking in randomly. It can really give you a sense of empowerment to visualize your space, your home, your sacred space, especially your sleep time or your sleep space. It's bringing up that energy, imagining that you're like radiating such bright vibratory energy that you're just making everything like sparkle and radiate really high so that no negative energy or low vibrational energies can just wander on in. And even if they're positive, they still need to be polite. If you're giving psychic work time and if you're opening up intuitively and giving your subconscious time to play, then there's no reason it has to push itself in unless it's an emergency when you're eating dinner or taking a bath if you don't want to receive information then or if you're trying to sleep. If you negotiate with your subconscious self, as strange as it sounds, and say, I'm going to give lots of time to meditation, I'm going to give 15 minutes every day or a half hour every day, or um, again, we talked about it, while I'm just puttering in the morning, I'm going to be open to receive information, um, or on Tuesdays at 4, I'm going to sit in my sacred space and I'm going to download information, and that's when I'm going to have these things come through, but that I don't want them coming in when I'm sleeping and I don't want them interrupting me when I'm doing my daily stuff or wandering through my hallways or anything like that. So again, to recognize that we have the, the honor and the privilege to be able to tell them when and when not to come and to come in in a format that's not frightening either. You know, if like for me, I don't want to see them necessarily. I do see them. I have seen them. But I don't want them floating around in my face. I, I've, I've had that, and I, I find it to be unnerving, you know. <laughs> um, just all of a sudden, there's a spirit there, you know. Um, for me, I'd rather see them in my mind's eye versus almost like standing here in the physical plane in front of me. I just, that it's not my thing. So I kind of have these rules with my subconscious about, um, the format that I'm comfortable with things coming through and to know that you this is your design this this beautiful gift is yours and to learn to manage it to turn it on to turn it off to open it to close it to play with it to give it time for play and when I say time it doesn't mean that you have to dedicate a huge chunk of your life to it I would maximize the times when you're kind of doing nothing else you know you're washing your dishes or your um, you know, you're just laying around anyway, or maybe during times, a lot of people like to talk to spirits when they're driving their car, as strange as it sounds. A lot of people um, create sort of an open, open forum kind of dialogue space in their car with loved ones. Um, and a lot of spirits like to come along for the ride and ride in that car and dialogue with you while you're in there and then everybody get on with their day when the ride's over. Um, giving space, letting the spirits know, or letting your subconscious self know when, when you're going to play stops you from being interrupted when you are in your sacred time or when you are, say, uh, getting ready for bed or trying to focus on work. You know, say you've got, say you're pounding out a bunch of paperwork and you've got like messages nagging at you psychically and coming in and kind of bouncing around in your head and it might cause you to not be grounded and not focused on your daily activities you know some people go to the other end of the spectrum and they have too much um stuff bombarding them versus not enough and to know that they also can tell energy or the psychic self tone it down um, come when I'm doing this work, but don't come pouring in when I'm not. Um, being able to practice with that and see what works for you is a really great way to hone in your psychic gifts and your psychic skills. A lot of people open up intuitively after they've gone 
Um, oh yeah, Sue, you're talking about your boundaries. Oh yeah, see, I'm that way too. I don't want to be touched. Do not touch me. I don't like strangers grabbing me. I don't like spirits touching me either. You know, I'm just a stickler for it. Um, I don't need to have the wow factor. You know, <laughs> I've been doing this long enough. I don't. I don't. I don't need to have my hair pulled or any of that. I've worked with um, um, some psychic groups that do paranormal investigations, and I've had some really bizarre experiences working with some groups that don't work, don't do anything for protection, and then going in and and really seeing some people manhandled. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I'm laughing. I myself have been blessed not to have that happen, but I I, I don't think it's just that. I have rules, you know. Don't don't touch me. Mm -mm. Um, no. Uh, but I've seen people really have to deal with some pretty heavy duty energies because they weren't grounded and they weren't going in empowered with what the rules are. And they wanted to have this phenomenal experience, this kind of psychic, weird ghost experience at all cost. And my feeling is nothing's at all cost. Um, you know, being manhandled, I, I saw this one guy thrown over a whole bunch of desks at this old school and actually there's a little blurb about it i think it's on my soundcloud it might also be might also be on my youtube but he was hurled uh across some tables um because he was not protected and i witnessed it happen and it took me back but um for me i didn't i honestly truly did not even feel the energy go flying past me or uh have that i didn't feel anything uh but i also was very grounded and i had done some meditations where i didn't want to be bothered i didn't want to be touched um and they weren't doing anything to help these spirits leave either they just wanted to study them and i think again you 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 have to consider that um energy wants a balanced relationship with us too and if we are exploiting it or doing it to for the wow factor if we're trying to thrill and chill people with ghost phenomena i can assure you sometimes your ghost may exhibit bad behaviors um if we're letting them know that i can see you i know you're here i'm don't want you in my space unless i call you in or unless you have something very important to say say it now and if you can't say it now you need to go and uh, again i'm a big one for that i know i sound a little harsh and a little rude but um they don't, I, most, most that I've encountered don't mean to be like floating an inch from your face or they don't mean to be interrupting you when you're sleeping. It's just the time that they're able to come through. And my thought is, you know, take it as a, oh, I've got something to learn here. If a spirit's interrupting me when I'm sleeping, you know, it's all right for me to wake up and say, come back when I'm meditating. I'll meditate tomorrow. I want to hear what you have to say, but you're not going to interrupt me in the middle of the night because that's just not okay. I need my sleep or I don't want you floating around in my house you need to go on out go on your way and i will give you time to come when i'm sitting quiet and meditating or opening up intuitively so again it's kind of a multi-prong approach on um, nurturing yourself oh i would love to have you on my show sue sometime um uh sometime to talk about some of the things that have happened to me i would love that you know sue we'll line it up i would love to i'm going to write it down with the notes as well about forwarding this to you and I'm going to write it down and we will talk about that because I really enjoyed the other night when we talked on air as well. Um, so it's a multi-pronged approach when we're opening up or developing our intuition is to make sure that we are nurturing our physical well-being, that we are taking care of ourselves, the common basics. We want to be getting the right amount of rest. We want to be managing our stress well. We want to be nurturing ourselves with the right vitamins and minerals so that our body and our physical form is not blocking by its own needs the playtime in the psychic realm. So to know that uh, sometimes if, if it's elusive, you might be a little bit out of balance in other areas in your life. And to know that maybe I need to spend a little time organizing my daily life before I really get confirmation of the intuitive side and to, to know that that's that, that's that it's a gift it's telling you hey I'll be there when you get when you're more balanced or 
as you begin to heal a little more, the psychic stuff starts to open up a little more. And to, to know that we go in ebbs and flows of that throughout our life, where it sometimes comes on in full force and other times it's elusive. And that's very normal. Even for people that work in this field endlessly, um, they will have times where they're really powerhousing it and, and banging it out of the ballpark. And they might have other times where they really are going to have to apply their tools to take their daily life and say, if you've got a headache or you're not feeling well, it is very hard to open up intuitively and do psychic work. So to, again, if it's not coming through or if you're struggling with opening it up, it's all right to be that little investigator and go inside and say, is there anything that's off kilter a little bit in my daily life? And maybe by, doesn't mean you have to be perfect, Lord, wouldn't that be hysterical if that were the case? Well, I wouldn't have my job. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do what I did. If that were the criteria. But it's more about knowing where you're at and knowing, okay, I've had a really stressful week. I've got a lot of personal, maybe emotional things on my plate. So today to do my intuitive work, I need to make a very conscious effort to create a separate space where my personal life and my daily details and my stresses are a little bit out of the way. I can push them out of the way and then I'm able to really give full concentration and focus and peacefulness to my intuitive flow and my intuitive process. And that just takes practice. Uh, we go in and out of that. And if you aren't able to open up psychically, don't try and bang it out or force it out. It's okay to say, I'll try it later or I'm gonna give it another try, maybe at a different time of day, or maybe a different day of the week. Um, you know, being that neat sort of investigator to see what works best for you, what your power times are. Um, a lot of people are highly intuitive first thing in the morning. Like they're just like freakishly intuitive. They wake up with gut feelings and instincts and messages and uh, that's just awesome if you're a morning person i definitely encourage that you try doing a bit of your intuitive exercises or building your intuitive self up a little bit during that power time in the morning for me i'm definitely a night owl those are my power times for other people it's different times of day um you know uh, trying it on a weekend versus a weeknight if you've got a really full work week and you've got a lot of pressure on your head you know, trying to do all your psychic work on a Wednesday night when you're also in between a whole bunch of other pressure might not be the most effective. But if I give maybe an hour or two on the weekend when I'm in a very peaceful state of mind or I'm able to create a small bit of peaceful space for myself and go into meditation or go into mindfulness tool or technique, uh, being able to quiet my mind and just invite messages to come through or discern or do some neat kind of journeying meditations where I'm gonna really get in touch with how my subconscious wants to talk to me, I might be able to do that much better on a weekend when I'm in a relaxed state, I can assure I probably will, than if I'm frantic and busy during the weekday. So I loved this. And uh, um, this was a, a, a first off for me, I just, I really felt like today I had to sit and talk about this for whatever reason. Um, I'd like to do more and more of this because I feel like I would love for every person out there to open up intuitively and raise their vibration and be able to get in touch with the messages that are for their highest good and for the highest good of all. I feel like truly our psychic self is on our side and it is beautiful and of pure vibration so even if you're getting like the oogies or an uncomfortable vibe i feel like there's something to learn there it might be about putting up some boundaries for yourself like we talked about a little bit of boundaries there or it could be that it's catching your attention and if it hadn't shaken you up a little bit you might have not noticed so to not jump to the conclusion that there's something dark and dismal around you if you get get that kind of strange, weird, off-put feeling, to know that it might be your subconscious really trying to get your attention this time because you've ignored it the last seven times. So this time it's gonna get you where you notice it. And to, to dialogue with that and to ask your subconscious self, okay, you got my attention, is that why this was uncomfortable? Or was this uncomfortable because I need to pay attention to how, that it felt uncomfortable? You know, and to really get into sitting and asking these types of questions and going inside and really seeing what kind of message you get back by speaking to yourself, almost again, like a bit of a detective. I felt something there. I enjoyed that. Um, I'd like to see it more clear or 
did I download that accurately? Did that make sense? You know, again, sitting with these thoughts and pondering them and then coming back and asking yourself how it made you feel, what you felt about that, not what you thought about it. To get out of that head, to not worry how it looked or the, the details aren't necessarily where the message lies. The message lies in how it feels, the way it made you feel. That's where the real messages are. I want to thank you all for being here with me. This was super exciting. And I didn't have any outline or agenda. I think maybe next time I'll be a little more planned because this was a little kind of random and haphazard, but I certainly enjoyed it. If any of you have questions, if I can help you in any way, this is one of my most favorite things to work with people on. I don't charge for it. Um, helping people develop their intuitive self to clear away blockages, to cheer themselves on, and to know we all have it. Every one of us has it in us. It's ours to learn to tap into. It's one of our higher gifts. I see it as important as any other sense that we have, if not more important. And my feeling is kind of getting used to seeing it as a part of you that's already there. And instead of looking at it as something outside of ourselves that we're hoping to bring in, but it's more about something that we're waking up from inside, that we're clearing away subtle blockages, clearing away fears, putting in boundaries and healthy rules so that we feel safe and, and that we can trust it and that we're not going to be menaced with or have anything negative come through. And to ease ourselves into it through baby steps, being the investigator, looking at where the blockages lie, and not judging yourself in any way, one way or another, whether you get messages or not. Sometimes messages are funny. They'll come in in a way where you're, you just laugh out loud. It's like, oh my gosh, my, my subconscious talks to me in such a funny way. Mine sure does. It's got a really good sense of humor. And uh, it's okay. It can come in really strange sometimes. And to not judge the way the messages are coming in or the information's coming in, be very open to it. It's a really creative process. And it, your subconscious will talk to you almost like a piece of art. And it's going to be ever-changing but it does have a format to it. There is a medium that it works with that is unique to you. It's special and it's all yours and it's just right for you. How any one of your beautiful subconsciouses talk to you is very different than how mine will talk to me. And to know that you can read books and learn from lots of people, but ultimately it's you figuring out how your subconscious gives you clues and messages. Blessings to everyone. Thank you for being here. I hope all of you enjoy Mother's Day tomorrow and have a beautiful evening for the rest of tonight. Thank you for joining me. It means the world to me. You guys are great. Oh, thank you. Have a good evening.